stand. Um, I want to welcome those that are downstairs at our bridge service, uh, worshiping in uh, Jerwoda Hall. Happy Easter to you as well. Now, for some of you, <laughs> I'm going to tell you that I'm still very excited to hear what Santa brought you for Christmas. <laughs> but if you're visiting with us today, we're truly glad that you're here. And hope you have a wonderful Easter with your family. I have a, a, a bone to pick with the Easter bunny. He brought my four-year-old daughter a bikini this morning in her Easter basket. So we're going to talk about that. Would you join me for a word of prayer today? Loving God, speak to us through our text this Easter Sunday. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You are our rock and our Redeemer. Lord, open our hearts to the miracle of the resurrection. Amen. The late Fred Craddock once preached an Easter sermon on this text from Matthew 28, and he began the sermon like this. Jesus was dead to begin with. That's hard to pronounce, of course. It's even harder to believe. There are some people that you cannot imagine dying. They are so important to so many people that they should not die. Jesus is that person, the one who never gossiped or criticized or turned his back on anyone, the one person who made no distinction as to whether you were rich or poor or educated or uneducated. He had a tender care that no one be lost. It's almost impossible to imagine the world without him. But Jesus was dead on Good Friday. It was an agonizing death, public, brutal, painful, shameful. His disciples had betrayed him. The world had rejected him. The system had executed him, and many thought it was over, but it wasn't. God did not allow the crucifixion to have the last word. Just finished doing some doctoral work at Sewanee, and there's a person that I've been studying and researching for a number of years now by the name of Stanley Hauerwas. He's a theologian at Duke University. This is what Hauerwas says about Easter. The one born of Mary, the one baptized by John, the one who called the disciples, the one who delivered the Sermon on the Mount, the one who cured the lame, the blind, the deaf, the mute, the one who disputed with the Sadducees and Pharisees, the one who endured humiliation by trial and cross. He has been raised. Matthew tells us that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb early that first Easter. There was an earthquake rolling back the stone. An angel appeared to them saying, do not be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised. Come and see the place where they lay him. Then go and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead. And he's going ahead of you to Galilee and there you will see him. And as the women ran to tell the disciples, they encountered Jesus and they fell at his feet and they worshiped him. Now, I fully realize that there may be some of you here this morning who consider yourselves Christians. You believe in Jesus. You want to follow him. You want to love others. You want to serve others. But you're just not so sure about this concept of being raised from the dead. There's just something in your rational, scientific, post-enlightenment mind that won't let you take that leap. Well, you're certainly not alone. There are many Christians who wrestle with exactly what happened that first Easter. We read the gospel accounts, but still we don't understand it. And all I can say is that we call it faith for a reason. We cannot explain or prove exactly what happened 
that first Easter, but we know that something happened. The forces of death and destruction that put Jesus on the cross did not have the final say. God had the final say. In the aftermath of a brutal crucifixion and death, God made things right. The resurrection is God's yes to the world's temporal nose. The resurrection is the power of God's love to take the absolute worst that people can do and not let it be the final word. Easter is the world's great history lesson of how God's love turns despair into joy, defeat into victory, and death into new life. And in a world that is as troubled as ours, we need to hear this great news. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Now there are some preachers who will take advantage of having a full church, uh, a captive audience on Easter to preach a long sermon. And then they wonder why nobody comes back the next week. But I'm not going to do that this morning. Some of you look relieved. Try not to look so relieved. Got to get to brunch. There's one phrase that is repeated in this text in Matthew's gospel that I think just might be the Easter message for us today. Four words. Do not be afraid. The angel says to the women, do not be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised. Jesus later appears to the women and says the exact same thing. Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. I think that that might be the best Easter message we can hear. Stop living in fear. Too many of us live our lives in fear every day and it's no way to live. Fear that we're going to run out of money. Fear that we might be abandoned. Fear that others will reject us. Fear that our lives won't matter. Fear that our health won't hold up. Fear that our kids won't appreciate us or respect us. Fear that our marriage isn't going to last much longer. Fear that our country isn't the same as it once was. Fear that there are too many dang people moving into this town. Fear that our health is going to get worse and worse. Fear that our best years are now behind us. And yes, fear that one day we're going to die. And you know what? This is no way to live. Afraid all the time. Anxious all the time. Worried all the time. Scared all the time. Nervous all the time. It takes the joy out of living. It's not what God intends. I've been recommending a book recently to some of our men's groups here at Woodmont. I'd recommend it to any of the guys here and any of the women that want to understand guys better. But the book is called The True Measure of a Man, written by a guy named Richard Simmons. Not the aerobics guy, but a different Richard Simmons. But Simmons says this about fear. Fear is created by uncertainty over the future, even if the ultimate outcome has only the slightest potential to be negative. Fear can produce a complexity of emotions. It can be a powerful force for taking positive action in our lives, or it can produce potentially crippling emotions. And unfortunately, what I see in our culture is that the fear that people experience usually falls into that second category. It paralyzes them. It leaves them scared to death. Simmons says, what I have seen so often is that fear and worry can indeed strangle the mind's ability to reason and think clearly. We bury ourselves in present imaginings when we worry about future events. Most people don't know how to deal with fear. They let it run wild in their minds, crippling them in a multitude of ways. Let me ask you, does fear cripple you? Does it take the joy out of your life? Why do you let it? Jesus spent his entire life in ministry trying to teach his followers to confront and overcome fear. 
Think about it. He says in the Sermon on the Mount, don't worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink. When he was asleep on the boat and the disciples came and woke him up because they were scared to death of the storm, he said, why are you afraid, you of little faith? When he asked Peter to come and walk on the water and Peter started to sink, he said, you of little faith, why did you doubt? He told the rich man, defined by his possessions, that if he wanted to be perfect to go and sell all that he owned, give the money to the poor, and then he'd have treasure in heaven. And the rich man said, no way. He was scared to death of what that might mean. Think about the bravery that he showed entering Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, turning over the tables in his temple, calling out the religious leaders, knowing that he would be killed. He showed incredible courage. Think about their faith. He prayed, if this cannot pass from me, not my will, but your will be done. I want to realize this morning, when I pray that we can't get up, we can't get up every day like that. We can't get up every day wondering what bad thing is about to happen next, wondering what's going to go wrong, wondering who we can really trust and who's going to look out for my back. A life that we can't see, no life at all. The story of Paul Farrell on Easter so shattered his heart. He came to the Savior of the world. The second in his great commission to the nations. And he shared the story of his happening in our world. All of us have these questions that we're wrestling with and saying, how can I live my life with the answer that we know? I think it's a great thing for us to think about this morning. What a world we live in where we're asking these questions. Because they're not easy to answer. And yet they're the ones that will make the world a better place. says in 1 John, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears is not being perfected in love. What are you afraid of? 
aren't you tired of being a Christian? Aren't you tired of living your life like something bad is always about to happen? What do you fear? How is your fear holding you back? Maybe you need to love more. Maybe you need to hope more. I began with the words of Fred Craddock, and so I thought I'd share with you how he phrased that message. He said, you see, the opposite of faith is fear, and fear is death itself. Why don't you go out for the ball team? Afraid I won't make it. Why don't you try out for the school play? Afraid I won't get the part. Why did you lie to your parents? Afraid I'd get punished. Why did you cheat on the test? Afraid I would fail. Why are you so jealous? Afraid of losing love. Craddock says, afraid, 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 afraid. That's the refrain of what we are and what we do. But don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to live and love and laugh. Don't be afraid to give and serve and care. Don't be afraid to speak and do. That's the message of Easter. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Jesus said, I'll be with you always until the end of the age. That's Easter. Amen.